Hello and welcome to um, all of our wonderful viewers this evening or this morning or this afternoon, wherever you happen to be. Um, we have today a wonderful match of X-Wing, uh, two fantastic players, one from Spain and one from our local uh, here in Sydney, Australia, uh, Mike Turner. Uh, we have a CIS fire spray squad versus a very funky scum squad from the Spaniard today. Um, I have with me uh, Jim. Jim, welcome, a fellow slug uh, and Sydney local uh, as well. How are you? Hey, good. Pleasure to be here. How are you, Cam? Oh, I'm very good. Very good. Very excited. Um, it is looking to be a very interesting game. Uh, do you? Would you like to just quickly run us through uh, Michael Turner's list today? Yeah, so Michael's running the uh, classic double fire sprays on the, um, the CIS. Um, so we've got Django Fett um, with a jamming beam. Season Navigator, Thermal Detonators, and uh, Contraband Cybernetics. And then we've got Zam, uh, also with the jamming beam, why not? Uh, Count Dooku, Thermal Detonators, Contraband Cybernetics, Slave One, and Boba Fett. Um, something a little bit interesting about Michael's squad here is the uh, Season Navigator. It's not too often seen in the double fire spray. Yeah, he's pretty much swapped out what would be... I think it usually has been like a palp or I think just palp is the only other option. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, swap that out for the season navigator, which acts as a, as a more impressive and more powerful version of the slave one title. So it's, uh, he can use it to some really great effect here. The, both of his ships will be moving after the other side, um, which I'll go through now, actually. So this squad is probably one of the most interesting squads. I think I've seen in the, um, in the XTC list uh, of all the different squadrons. So we have Lando Calrissian with Trickshot. Sorry, everyone. Uh, we're on, uh, we are on, we have Lando Calrissian with Trickshot, L337, BT1, and the Lando's Millennium Falcon title. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Lando's Millennium Fal Falcon title does, um, that gives him an extra dice. Basically, in this matchup, it will just give him an extra dice uh, on the attack if one of his uh, one of his sorry if the opponent is stressed. Um, we've got Nom Lum with proton torpedoes, auto blaster cannon, Zam Wessel, and contraband cybernetics. And then, lastly, I think uh, the real beast of this squad, if I if I can uh, sort of understand what uh, Andy is going for here, we have a Sarge Ventress with Maul. Contraband Cybernetics, False Transponder Codes, and the Shadowcaster title. Now, the Shadowcaster title probably won't be doing much in this game. Um, I don't actually, it literally won't be doing anything um, because the tractor tokens won't stick around past the first, uh, past the, the round that they get applied, and two medium based ships don't really care too much about a single tractor token. Um, so, those are our two squadrons. I think this is going to be a very interesting match. Uh, simply for the fact that Andy's squad is so different. Three large bases, it's hard to fly. Um, I'm sure he has a strategy here. Uh, any ideas, Jim, on what that strategy might be? Yeah, so one of the interesting things, especially with Scum right now, is that Zam Wessel card. It's, yeah. it's really getting used a lot, and we're seeing ships come out of the woodwork. Um, Nom Lum is a great example people were really playing around with it when it first came out, but no one was really using it, especially um, in a competitive list. Um, it's it's good to see these uh, stranger ships come back out and, and have a strong presence on the field. Um, and Han in the Scum Falcon. Uh, Lando. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Lan Lando in the Scum Falcon. I'm too used to Han. I love Han. And Han um, did just win the uh, Bespin... Uh, qualifies on Gold Squadron podcast, so uh, pretty much so. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. scum falcon in general being seen on the field right now is is shocking to say the least. Um, but it's being put to good use. Yeah, and I actually, what I'll do as well. Um, hello to Mister Bonda. Uh, I don't know who that might be. Um, I'm sure it's not not the uh, James Bond. But I wanted to give a special shout out to these really lovely paint jobs on these ships here. Uh, I love it. 
Uh, I really do. I'm disappointed. Um, Mike is just running the two. Oh, two generic fire sprays. Um, but we really do have some really lovely paint jobs here on Andy's side. So big shout out for that. Um, always love to see that. Just makes it a little bit more visually appealing for us. Um, Andrew Rosemary. Thank you, Lord uh, Ninox, for uh, translating Andy's, Andy's name. Uh, that's a very sweet and very cuddly name. I like that. Um, so looking at this matchup, um, my personal take, uh, uh, sorry, just to answer Bathurst Bogan's question, actor did win today. Currently the standing is one win uh, to zero Australia's way at the moment. So this is an important game. Uh, I think what that will do, a victory for Australia here would sort of give them some momentum and hopefully um, boost up the guys, but you, you can't count out can't count out Andy's Andy here. Uh one thing that I find when it comes to squads like this, and I am known to fly some really strange squads myself, um, normally someone will get across from you when you've got a really oddball squad and just say, what, what is that about? How does that work? And they usually don't see the synergy that you've created yourself. So I think that's one of Andy's advantages here is I'd be hard-pressed to, to tell you what I think Andy is going for, and I think Michael might be in the same boat. So the the sort of individualistic version, uh, sorry, individualistic design of this squad. Um, you know, it's not a meta squad. It's not, we don't see Lando Carrizzi and the Falcon. We don't even really see a Sarge that much outside of some tractor shenanigans. Um, yeah, I just, what, what, what's your take, Jim? What do you think Andy's going for here? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it, this this kind of squad is often re referred to as, as kind of the stress bot Asage. So you've got that um, Millennium Falcon title supporting Asage who's also dealing out stress as well um, to kind of uh, get those extra dice on the Falcon to make it an actual key piece um, on the field. Otherwise, it's slinging not enough dice to, to really make a difference. Um, and those that combo has always existed. It's, it's, it's been there since we started 2.0. Um, but again, it's, it's these extra tools that are coming out. Nom Lum, new pilot. Um, Zam Wessel, new upgrade. Um, that just kind of these new toys are back in action. Um, so it's three very strong ships. Um, it's very hard to underestimate any of these um, on their own. And three large bases at that. They're very, very healthy ships um, and also have a lot of movement. Um, they do. And I think that's... That's one advantage Mike has coming into this game. Three large base ships are hard to manage. It is a difficult... Two, two medium base ships, Mike's brain is open for a lot more strategy, um, whereas Andy's going to have to be thinking, where is that ship going to land? What can I do next turn? And, you know, You have to be planning two turns ahead before you move one of these big beasts. Um, I think it makes a big difference. So we are moving now into uh, the obstacle placement, which I think is very key here. Again, those large base ships are not nearly as maneuverable despite Asajj's speed. The fire sprays have boost. They're medium base. They fit everywhere. Um, I think the obvious move, if I'm looking at this, I'm saying Mike probably wants a tight formation. Andy probably wants a wide formation of the obstacles. Yeah, so... Um... You know, Michael. Michael really wants to take advantage of these large um, obstacles that he's brought along here. He, he did place one of the smallest down first, um, but he is scooching those larger ones towards the middle. And it seems like they're both quite interested in keeping it a bit tighter here. No, Andy's spreading it further. And yeah, Mike. The... Yeah, here's and Mike. Now. He's 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 putting that in very tight. He wants to block lanes. He wants somewhere for the, his fire sprays to go and play. Um, he's going to be making great use of that back arc, moving through the the, the obstacles, um, and trying to force Andy to have to deal with them. Uh, it's probably a good strategy here, but at the same time, these Andy's ships are so bulky, uh, and he's got some some pretty decent uh, passive mods across all three ships that he may just say, you know what, I don't care, and just drive straight over them, which is another whole other mind game that Mike now has to play. Um, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting game. 
punch straight over those obstacles as well and do some damage. One of the, one of the things you really have to watch out for with the Sarge, especially, is that 5k. It goes so far on a large base, and even with those lanes blocked out, um, there's just so much capability for a Sarge to get behind you and do real damage. A Sarge, I a Sarge is your end game piece here. If you're if you're Andy, you say. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna shove Nomlum in your face. You're gonna shoot Nomlum. I'm gonna shoot you back with a proton torpedo if I'm lucky, um, and we'll see what uh, see what you can answer. Um, the other thing I think as well that's a bit of a tough tough ask here for Andy is he's got three large base ships and one of them is Initiative One, which is a fantastic blocker. Nomlum she comes along and she'll block up everything, but then that causes a problem for yourself because then you're blocking those lanes for yourself. You can't choose the, the, the order of activation for all three of your ships, and that will cause that will cause some problems for Andy. And I'm sure he's practiced. Uh, I'm sure he's sick of looking at this squad the amount of times he's probably been practicing. So he's, he's going to be a lot better than you or I probably would be. Yeah, so um, a good... Um... Something we haven't touched on is is Michael's perspective here. So we, we've all seen this triple fire spray list, but it's not too often we see it come up against three large bases here. They do have, even though these large bases have such good maneuverability, those fire sprays move so well. Um, they have that boost action, which is amazing with that rear arc as well. Um, what do you what do you think Michael's uh, best bets are going up against this list? What targets? Should Michael be looking at, and what targets should Andy be looking at, um, going straight? Yeah, ahead. that's a great point. Um, if I'm Michael, uh, I probably want a Sarge to die, but the problem is a Sarge with the Force. She can take an evade. She's very tanky. She's very very tanky. Um, Lando, I think, is probably the easiest target. Uh, he's only got one agility. Uh, he's only he's not he's not a He's not a Rebel Falcon. He's only got, uh, I think it's a total of 11 health. Um, he can get burned down very quick, especially if Zam is getting double shots into him every turn. But the problem is, time is not necessarily on Mike's side here. He, If one of his ships gets halved, that's a that's a lot of points. Uh, and he doesn't have hull upgrades. It's five points. Five points of damage into a fire spray. And Andy's got... A fair amount of points, 50 odd points. Um, and I think for Andy, the obvious target is Django. Django doesn't have the passive mods that Zam has, and Django can't shoot you back once you shoot him. So I think the obvious answer, from in my opinion, is probably uh, Django. You shoot Django if you can. Yeah, so we've got we've got both sides set up here. We've got dials being placed, um, and the timer starting soon. Um, we can see Andy here is actually set up um, quite well to protect Asage, knowing that that's that's his key piece. Yeah, uh, that's his end game piece. And um, it looks like Michael's almost done the same here. So Michael's working with a lot of space on that bottom side. Um, He's got a lot of room to move and reposition while these large ships uh, tend to get lost um, in the middle there. Um, yeah, Michael definitely wants uh, to burn down Asajj. Uh, but uh, yeah, Andy Andy knows that as well, and um, I don't think he's going to let him get away with it easy. All right, well, Jess, the guys look like they're about to get started. I'm just having a squeeze around. They've, they've both got dial set, so they're pretty much ready to go. Uh, I just want to make sure we get our stream clock on. Yep, they're about to start it, and he's hovering. He's hovering. Are you going to do it? Come on, Mike. What are we waiting for? All right. Looks like they're about to go. And... <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. This is more exciting than Patience. the game. There we go. All right. <laughs> there we go. So Mike is good. Andy is good. And the game will begin. So they both have Zam here, so but the Zam on Andy's side gets placed before the Zam on um, on Mike's side. Not that that makes a huge difference, and I should also mention that uh, actually I didn't see who who placed the first obstacle. Did you uh, see? I think Michael actually placed. Yeah, the I think he did. So I think Mike Mike has given himself the initiative. Yeah. 
thank you again to everyone following. Um, actually, I should have mentioned a little bit early before the game started, but we will be streaming two games roughly the same time tomorrow, um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Australian, Australian Time. Two games, um, Australia versus Spain once again. Uh, it'll First game uh, is Nobby versus... Uh, I can't quite remember who that the other one is there. And um, the, the second game at 10 p.m. is Tom Harper versus uh, Spain's resistance squad. So if you're looking for a nice Friday night of X-Wing, Sp- Sydney City Space Lugs is the place to be. All right, so we've seen um, all ships move now. So Asajj has come out fast, um, as we would expect here. And it looks like um, Michael's uh, shot, shot out both his ships quite fast as well. Yeah, it looks like they really want to... I mean, I, they're both clearly trying to catch an early early shot here. Um, yeah, sometimes that early little uh, plink range three shot um, actually can, can make all the difference early on, especially if you can get away with it safely. Um, especially with Lando's arcs are on his side. So if, if Zam was able to get a boost in there, if that, if that debris cloud wasn't there, that, that surely could have been a range three shot, could have stripped three shields. Yeah, and he definitely um, approached a lot more safely from the mm. inside field there with Lando. Um, but Michael is in a position here to definitely cut out still as well. He's played it safe. Um, he's in a great position. Um, and Andy's actually set up quite well as well. Um, yeah, I think so. the, ten- the, the the propensity to have Nom Lum just ram in there uh, is high. However, yeah. um, I think having... Uh, Asajj next to Nom Lum just makes that target even though she's easy to burn down as well makes that target even a little less enticing uh, even if you forget about the proton torpedoes that she can fire back once you've shot her and we have confirmation that um, yes Michael did uh, take first player he sure and did Honda go slugs go um Thank you. We're not actually playing in this. Thanks, Mister Ponda. Yeah, um, but we appreciate the cheers for the commentator. Yes, go, yeah. go well, us, go, go us. <laughs> um, yeah, agreed. Uh, as a goal, uh, I think hull upgrades would be pretty handy. Um, but I mean, what what tricks has he got here? He's got thermal detonators, slate. But there's so many passive mods on that Zam Wessel. Um, if he can get behind those ships, uh, and he can get close enough. He, he's got a lot there to do. Boba Fett as well. Um, Boba Fett, who I don't think we see too often. Uh, I'm going to just bring up on the screen here. Um, oh, using the wrong... Using my wrong keyboard there. The Boba Fett. Which one is that? That should be the one. Yep. Sorry, that's not so, the one. That's the pilot. Lando just has no shields in the overlay. Oh, sorry. That was me playing Thank with it you. earlier. Oh. Sorry. As a goal. Thank, Thank you, you for that. Um, so we can see Nom Lum has uh, moved in here. Ooh, and a fast four straight uh, from Lando there, trying to set up that trick shot um, from a disengaging ship here. Ah, very it's good move. Likely we'll see Zam not get Was that a bump? in this net. No, not a bump. Um, so I just wanted to bring up, I've got Boba Fett up here. Um, while you perform an attack, if there are no other ships in the attack arc, you may change one of your eyeball results to a hit result. Um, again, just lots of passive mods on that Zam. And I think she's she's happy with this exchange. Um, there's going to yeah, be got, three dice got, into three dice. Well. Um, he's got probably only Lando on that arc, so he's changing a focus result already. Uh, so uh, Asajj has having... three force as well. Yeah. Yep. So good. it looks like Asajj has actually bumped here, but she's in a safe enough position to she's not fine. be punished yeah. by that. Um, with the three force as well, there's really no big fear this early in the game of um, bumping. Yeah, into definitely. Asajj. Ah, greetings from Sweden. Uh, scouting for the coming rounds. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Fair Let's enough. Roll. So this is Mike's, this is a Sarger shot. So I think he's, yep, that's a Boba Fett trigger there. Uh, doesn't have to spend anything, just gets it. And that's a shield. There's one shield on Lando. That is the first, first bit of damage, first blood in the water there. See now, 
um, we'll have this shot back from Lando. And I mean, that's three dice into four dice. That's, I think Mike's probably pretty happy with this exchange, depending on how the dice end up going. But he's, again, he's got some mods. Passive mods with uh, Dooku. Oh, and he's not promoted. Look at that. So he he did drop in in and out a couple of times. Um, so uh, he's promoted once again. There we go. So that's three hits from Lando there. That's pretty good. I mean, it was a solid chance of him getting that with his using his ability anyway. Um, and again, that's fine. Uh, that's a, that's a good trade there for Mike. That's a shield for nothing really too strong. Oh, and that's that is Zam Wessel trigger. That's, um, you'd better mean business. After you defend, you may spend two and shoot back. Uh, so, yeah, Mike's going to take that. He's going to fire back. Michael's getting a good trade out of this now. He's taken no damage. Um, and yeah, Boba Fett trigger again. Shot. There's one. And you've got, yeah, you've got, I think that's an evade there. No, it's an eyeball, but spend the focus. Yeah, but that, that's that's a good trade for Mike, and Mike's in a decent position here. He's got um, the opportunity to send Zam to the other side of the board and keep Django moving in that right-hand side direction. Uh, and uh, Andy has Nomlum behind uh, Lando, but I suspect I suspect some bumps are due here. Just slow it down a little bit, wait to see where Django and Zam go, and then react with Nomlum and get Nomlum in a good position. Yeah, he's 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 uh, locked himself up in the middle here. Um, it's a bit difficult for all of his ships to manoeuvre. Um, Michael has some real good playroom right now. Um, he's got that whole bottom side of the board to play in. He has the option to split his ships if he wants, um, um, but it's likely he'll move them together and, and hopefully swing around while uh, Andy is, is lost in the chaos. That middle... Um, Asteroid uh, debris cloud there, sorry, um, placed down uh, by Andy. Uh, looks like is coming back to bite him. Yeah, I think, I think uh, it definitely helped him. Uh, or the, the though, sorry, in that first exchange because it stopped Sam from getting that boost and just basically charging straight ahead, um, taking a few good pot shots into Lando, unanswered and bugging out all the same. So at least this way. He was able to get that trick shot off, even though it didn't do any damage. I think it sort of worked exactly how he wanted it to work. Um, but it will be interesting to see what uh, decision, because Mike's got a decision here. I think Andy's got some pretty obvious moves. He can punch in a one bank either side from Lando, probably banks to the left, pilot left there. Uh, does a bump with Nom, does a bump with Sarge, and just waits it out. Sees, Waits to see where where uh, Django ends up and wh which dis which direction Zam ends up choosing because Mike does sort of have a 50-50 choice. We'll see which one is the better choice. Uh, but I think he's happy to let Andy stew on that for this turn. We have a lot of um, sp uh, Spanish supporters and a lot of Australian supporters as well. I think it's a good time for both countries because uh, it's only about 9.20 p.m. Uh, here in si in Australia, uh, in Sydney, eastern side anyway, uh, and in Spain, I from my memory, it's probably around one twenty p.m. Uh, I do actually. That's a very good point, Lord Ninox. Um, two fewer charges on Zam is probably worth one shield on Lando. I do agree. I do agree. Um, one one. Uh, I think that. Th to try and take advantage of those charges coming back super quick, I think uh, Mike will try and only present Zam as the only target. We'll try and present Zam as the only target where he can, just so he can get those charges, get the target locks, um, and try and regen that as quick as possible. It is hard to lose those, use those so early in the game and get nothing for it. Ooh, and we've got uh, 69 viewers right now. Nice. <laughs> I noticed it, but I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> nice. 
Nice. And we're seeing uh, one straight, one straight. That bump and that move from Lando as well. Yeah. Um, quite a good play here. He's got a lot of room to navigate. Now. Yeah. He, he, even a one You're hard from Nom Lum next turn helps catch Django, uh, or even a, I think maybe even a two hard maybe fits, but you hit the debris probably just safe to do a one hard. Um, uh, and a one. Str- ah. Okay. Yep. Stay where you are. Don't move. That's a good little holding pattern there Andy's put together. It really does give him an opportunity just to see the decisions that Mike ends up making here. Good. It's smart. Uh, Asajj actually is in a great place. Um, once these two ships move out of her way, she has the, the ability to go either a three bank either way um, and really focus in on a ship that may have been split here. But it does look like Michael is... Um, keeping his ships um, a bit tighter together with um, ooh, with Django moving ahead right now. Mm. Looks like he's trying to draw out that holding pattern uh, to try and make the choice. Strike. Uh, threatening here a, a dive in on Nom Lum. So Nom Lum's ability, I'm sure everyone uh, has seen it many, many times, but I'll just get that one up as well because I think that's a, it's always a really good ability uh, to refresh on. Uh, once you, after you become the defender, if the attacker is not in your turret arc, you must rotate your turret indicator to a standard arc the attacker is in. Uh, got that up on the screen there. Uh, very good, very good ship. Essentially, he's got three weapons stapled onto his Nom Lum. He's got the Proton Torpedoes, he's got the Auto Blaster Cannon, and he's got that primary turret arc. So essentially, doesn't matter where you are. If you shoot at Nom Lum, Nom Lum is shooting you back. She's initiative one, so both of Mike's ships uh, will be shooting before she does. So as long as you shoot into her, she's going to shoot you back. Not always a quality shot, depending if you're in that front arc will depend on which weapon she uses, because if she does, if you do shoot her uh, and she gets that target lock on you, she's shooting you back with a proton torpedo. Uh, and that could even be using the Zam trigger as well from her crew, the Zam crew. Andy's in a uh, fun position here. Uh, hello from Sweden, from Target Lock TV. Hello. Hello. So nice. Lando, I think, here is the odd duck because his positioning is a little more difficult. Uh, the hard turns, easy. Um, uh, I'm, yeah, pretty sure. A hard turn right hard is totally turn safe. Down here. Um, the hard turn left. The issue is... Django is actually quite far out. If he does hard turn left and Django doesn't pull in, there's definitely no shots um, yeah. out of Lando here, and it would be difficult to get uh, past that that um, that rock there on the bottom side once he does that hard too, unless he risks going over it to stay in the fight. Um, mm. But on the adverse side, um, Zam is actually a bit split. From January. She is in a very unfortunate spot. I think that was... Uh, what did you do last turn? It was a one bank, I think. Two bank. Um, really probably worried about that trap spring, like a five straight from a Sarge or something, just to try and take like a sneaky little shot. Um, yeah, and because he was right behind Django, he blocked his own boost to start coming around. So he's probably got a one hard in. A one hard, maybe a boost... Um, but yeah, Zam's out of position and he's sort of hung hung Django out there to dry. Yeah, I suspect yeah. probably, honestly, a four straight from, from Django. Um, and that season navigator means he can react. So he could have a hard one in, change it to a one straight, uh, even a one bank in the opposite direction and then boost. Um, the season navigator is probably what he's banking on here. He's probably got something set up to try and evade whatever's coming. But we'll see what he ends up doing. Uh, hello to uh, yep. Pirate Stella. Um, thanks for joining us. And we see Nomlam turn in here on Django. Uh, yep, and the one bank there from Asajj. And I think that was a bump. Yes, yes, yeah, Asajj bumped. Yep. Too hard from Lando. He's going to come around the other way. Good, safe move, knowing where um, Django is going. 
I like one thing I think is a uh, a boon and a bane for Asajj is her speed and size. And I like how he's using Nomlum to keep her back sort of as this protective older sister. Just sort of, hey, if you, you come in too close, if you try and come in for that range one to deny the proton torpedo, I'm shooting you. Um, stressing you. In other games, probably tractoring you. Um, I like it. I think that's um, that's a really good little strategy there. And there we go. That was uh, four straight. Uh, a boost... A boost gets... Yeah, nice. Boost gets you out of all the arcs there. Um, maybe have a shot on Asajj. But like Zam's... safe from Lando as well. Um... Zam's going to have to come in quick next turn. But that rock is very helpful for um, Django's flank here as well. Uh, hello to Vashe Beastie. Thanks for joining us. Um, where are you joining us from? Ooh, just clips Asajj. Just clips Asajj there. That was, a, that was a solid move. The only problem is no, no mods. No passive mods here. I'm assuming he's not shooting the jamming beam. That's range two. Uh... Gets one in. Spends a force. Doesn't spend a force. No, no, does. Oh, he's, uh, Mike's indicating it was only one. Only one going through after the force expenditure. So spends a force to take one damage there. There's Mike getting away with free damage again. Yeah. Uh, the second turn here. Um... I don't think Andy's going to let him get away with it the next turn, though. Zam's pointing into a corner. Um, do you spring a Nomlum trap? Do you just... I don't know, four straight? Catch her in the corner there. I mean, she could probably boost in and maybe get into range one, but then you've got your little Asajj older sister bully from behind. Um, Zam's in a good... Uh, sorry, Django's in a good spot here. He's got the flank. No way Lando can get... Um, an obstructed shot next turn. Uh, Lando's either going to have to do a hard turn or a bank and face the board edge to get shots. It's good positioning, um, but he's sort of just left Zam in a corner on her own to 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 get it. Um. So, Zam and still at zero charges, um, and we've got two shields off, or one shield off on two ships, on Andy's side. Uh, there's going to be this feels like a very cat and mouse game, um, mostly the large base ships being the cats and Mike's little fire sprays being the mice, uh, which I think is maybe a position they're not quite used to being in. I think they're used to being the big bullies. So um, it'll be interesting to see how Mike's playstyle has changed to to approach this squad. Um, because you sort of can't just dive in and start shooting at them. Um, you can arc dodge and, and uh, you can do your best, but there's also quite a few arcs on the table. Let's not forget uh, Asajj has a turret arc, Nom Lum has a turret arc, and Lando has a turret arc. Uh, so there's quite a few arcs on the board. Um, so getting shots isn't going to be too hard for Andy, but it's just about trying to make them stick. Getting good mods, getting in close, and not getting shot back, especially with Zam's... Uh, pilot ability triggering too often. Um, I do wonder, actually, if we'll see uh, any thermal drops from Django. Or is that just not worth it? You might consider dropping at least uh, good one. Point, sorry, good point from Azagol there. Um, we do have Contraband Cybernetics on the board, which I definitely forgot about. Um, so Nomlum could get a little Contraband Cybernetics in there and get a target lock, maybe. Um, or a focus and expect maybe to get shot back. Uh, and Asajj as well also has that contraband for so 5k there to turn in and just really trap trap Django but give her rear to to Zam. It's also possible. And just a reminder that both players uh, do not have charges on uh, their Zam Wessels. So uh, Michael is down all four charges on his Zam Wessel as he spent... Uh, yeah, I can update it, that, that oh, in yeah. here. And Zam on Nomlum uh, also uh, is without charges. I at can't the moment. update that in here. 
Yeah, I can't actually update that in here. I thought I could. Oh well. Um, yeah, uh, but I think really on the nom lom side, you don't really care too much. I think you, you Zam is there at least for the first engagement or two to get a target lock, get a fully modded proton torpedo shooting at you. Fire sprays are always the most timid ships on the board. That's an interesting take. I do think they are uh, far more slippery than you sort of expect them to be with that boost and that rear arc. Yeah, especially nowadays um, that the uh, scary uh, Han Gunner is no longer sitting on Boba Fett. Or Maul on the scum. scum Yeah, these days the fire sprays do have to uh, put in work, especially when you've only got two on the field. They do have to play timid. They have to take their shots uh, very wisely um, and make sure that they aren't getting destroyed by three large base ships. Thank you for all the follows as well, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, It's it's nice to see people wanting to see some more X-Wing. That's really what we're about here, just trying to get some really good X-Wing out to uh, all the X-Wing enthusiasts around the world. So it's really nice to have people uh, supporting us there. So we know um, Nomlam has uh, the four straight here. Um, there's a good opportunity here for Andy to really push into that corner and punish um, the separation of Zam and Django here. What do you think is uh, Michael's play? Uh, and we are seeing the four here forwards. We go. Here. Yep, this is this is what I was sort of thinking might happen: is spring a trap, see if we can catch uh, Zam. Um, again, Zam can probably too hard boost to get into range one. But I suspect a possible three or four, three forward here from Asajj. Uh Yeah, that's that looks very good for Andy. There's not a lot of options that uh, Mike has here to, to get out of at least getting shot by. He's taking at least a shot from um, both ships, actually. I don't think there's really much of, a, of an escape route here. A lock there. Reaching for a lock. It's probably it. uh, false transponder codes as well. Um, on both, sh- no, no, just sorry, just on a such such as false transponder. Yeah. Uh, Nomlum already has a target lock on. I didn't notice that. Nomlum already has the target lock on Zam Whistle. The fire. Yes. Yeah, so that that would have. Uh, they would have come from when around the, when Zam was sort of hanging out in the middle. That was a very good, very smart play early by Andy here. I wonder if you maybe... Um... Ah, okay. Ah, Contraband Cybernetics and boost out of there. All right, well, I was well, wrong. be copying that shot from Asajj. And he may be double stressed as well if he doesn't get out of range two. I think that might be close. Definitely goes for the boost here. You... Oh. <laughs> Cheeky. Looks like he's just out of our Cheeky. Uh, <laughs> I can see Andy checking it. He's he's wondering if, if that... I, I probably would have... I'm a coward, I don't know. I probably would have gone just for the straight boost just so that uh, I know I'm not copying because that proton torpedo is going to hurt. Oh, and Zam had a... um, She had a target lock set up already. So that was jammed off by the false transponder goes from Asajj. You see the three bank um, from Django as well. Three bank from Django. So yeah, it's not a great exchange there for, for Lando. All on his own. All on his own. Uh, a range two shot from Django. Ken hurts. Three dice into your one. Gonna got got shield down. Hit crit. Pretty happy. He gets to keep his mod there as well. Lando gets the evade. Takes a shield. But I mean, you're a fire spray. You're taking two, sh- two, two red dice back into your two green dice. I'm not so confident. Uh, that Zam's out of that arc. And I'm I'm sure Mike is sweating in his boots as well. 
Uh, Andy licking his lips, hoping to get that proton torpedo off fully modded. Two here from Zam into Nom Lum. So we've got the right amount of green dice there, and we've got Natty's safe. Nice. So one thing that Andy's doing quite well here um, is Mike is having to spread this damage around a little bit. Um, so Nom's done the free rotate there. And activated her trap card, which happens to be... You should thank me. You should thank me. Recovers a charge. Already has a target lock, but happy to recover a charge. And I suspect Sam will be doing... Uh, Zam on the other side, on Mike's side, will be doing the same thing. Recovering charges, getting target locks. So we have Asajj up next. Yep, Asajj, range 3, obstructed. Got a target lock. Two We've dice, two spins here. a force, yep. Happy with that. And yeah, Mike does the same. Gets two naturals, spins the force. Prevents that um was that with what range was that? That was range three. Range three of extra stress from coming through there. Yeah, that that would have been massive. It's probably why he did the bank actually. Yeah, um, as a goal, uh, that was a great play. I agree. That was actually very, uh, very big brain. Um, he he saw what what I saw that four straight coming in from the ooh double crits, double crits from the little little turret arc gets a shield on Zam. Hey, you're not unhappy about that. Um, Zam will get another charge back, I presume, unless Mike is gonna forget. I don't think he flipped his Zam at all, actually. But the one. Oh, sorry, that was the Lando. Sorry. I'm thinking ahead here. So he didn't flip it after the last defense, um, but did recover a charge. Oh, no, he did. Sorry, it's up there in the top left corner. Yeah, Nom is in a very bad, bad spot. Um, has to punch in that sloop there. Uh, once we get these dice out of the way, I will... Ooh. Sinks in the two damage. Uh, in... Hit it onto the shields, um, onto Zam there from Nom Lum. Yep, Nom Lum. Uh, sorry, uh, Zam. Now back into uh, return shot range. Not unhappy about that, um, but had to trade two shields to get there. Uh, yeah, Azagol, sorry, made a good point um, about the sloop coming in. I'm just going to bring up that. Uh, I think the sloop is in the other direction. Uh, I'm not sure if that sloop will fit. Uh, but I don't trust my large base knowledge. Um, yeah, possibly even... Yeah. Nom, Nom Lum put a lot into that. That was a big risk from Andy. I think it was a right call, um, because if you didn't, you sort of were giving your side and or back to to Zam, which is not a good idea either. But yeah, Nom Lum's not in a great spot, and that big rock there is stopping um, Asajj from being able to turn in. Uh, you jump up, it does have a left uh, three bank loop. Correct, yeah. So that it would put him either. Might not fit. I don't think it's so. close. It's very close. It's very, very close. Um, I think Mike's happy with that. I mean, the exchange wasn't great. Losing two shields on Zem never feels good. But um, he avoided that proton torpedo. And um, he really did put uh, Nom Lum into a, a less than advantageous position at the moment. A two hard or a one hard uh, in that direction towards Zam might not be the worst idea because uh, Zam is stressed and the only blues they've got are one, two, three straight and the banks. One bank and one banks, correct. So Zam's probably one banking. Maybe a boost gets you out of there, but 
or Christoph saying uh, maybe a, a left one hard from Nom. Evening Suresh, uh, a fellow slug himself, has joined the chat. Yeah, I always get confused as well as a girl. I, I, it's very confusing. It's a very confusing, confusing ship. Yeah, it has to do the hard right, hard hard turn. Uh, yeah, right, I think is correct. Could hard turn left. Sorry, let me get that off the screen. Uh, could hard turn left. Let me get that up again because I always forget this dial. Could hard turn left here yeah, for a white and just sort of take your time and re-engage maybe. Um, I think Asajj is in a bad spot as well with that rock in the way. Um, no points on the board yet either. No one's half pointed at anyone. Uh, who who are you favouring now, Jim? Um, so Michael's in a, actually. Oh, a sorry, guys. Ball. Hang on. I'm, I'm I'm I am now removing uh, the updating the overlay. My bad. Sorry. I'm getting too excited. It's too exciting of a game. Uh, yeah. So so Django's actually in a great position here to either um, safely harass. Um, Asajj here if they don't actually move fast enough. Asajj doesn't have room to turn in on on Zam here. Um, but Nomlam is definitely going to do um, that hard one. And Azagal makes a great point. Uh, Zam really, really needs to move to get out of the way mm. uh, of that proton rocket um, that uh, Andy will be hoping to, to push out of Nomlam here. Um, but... Um, Michael does not have to stress. <laughs> Lord Ninox, good point. Right bombs. I always forget them as well. Uh, we do have the bombs. I think I've mentioned them every turn except for this one. So Zam is dropping bombs. Two bombs. And we've got Happy to um, go. Dooku as well to, um, if he feels safe enough, um, just automatically make one of those bombs. Hit. Yeah, I wonder if a hard to... Oh, Andy showed his hand there. I only saw a couple doesn't matter anyway because all the ships move before <laughs> before Mike's move anyway so yep we will see bombs dropped by Zam he makes the decision after he's dropped these bombs if he wants to drop with Django but probably don't bother Lando's probably only doing a one or two bank alright here we go so we have a one hard, yep, one hard away. Take some time, reconfigure. Um, you'll be able to keep that left hand turning uh, and catch catch Zam, sorry, Django, as he, as he comes back in. I suspect Zam is either going to do a four straight or even possibly a one hard. So, and here we go, a barrel roll. Yeah, I agree. As a goal, probably um, a navigator ready to go. I think even a one straight, um, because that way the, the the banks can then at least change to to white. Good safe play there from Andy, and he's gone for the bump again. Yeah, taking advantage of Nom Lum's big size to move a bit slower, reposition and take his time. Too hard here from too hard bump. From Lando. Sorry, no, no, Lando did not bump. I am wrong. Lando did not bump. Very, very good there. That was very close. Trying to catch um, Django here, knowing that if he did just the bank, he probably wasn't going to get a shot unless he rotated his arc. So a safe one bank here from Zam. Just boosts. Yep. And another safe maneuver from Django there. Disengaging from the fight really well. He's still in Lando's arc. Uh, but is he going to sink in that hurt? Uh, straight out the rear Takes arc. Takes a lock. Right Takes a lock. Looking to get very aggressive here. Um, Django does have a shield down. So he's... He's wanting to get three paint in. I mean, again, uh, we, we can't forget as well, this is very important, but L3 is still active as well. So even if... So here we go. Is this the first roll? Um, if 
first roll here. So now L3 can trigger here. Uh, defender modifies defense dice. Uh, sorry, attack dice. Ooh, yeah. Doesn't. Yeah. Uh, he rolls the, the green dice. I think Mike was waiting to see if the, the L3 would trigger before ro using the the target lock. Django spends the target lock, re-rolls the two, uh, gets a three. And Andy re... Is he gonna... I guess it's sort of up to the players. I think um, it was an eyeball. Whether or not they re-roll it. Andy did jump the gun a little bit. So I think he just, yeah, he just accepts that. Um, can spend a focus to change it to one. Nope, just takes the three. Yep. So that's shield down and two hull into Lando there. Lando's got six hull left. Uh, that is not quite half points. One more, I think, in for half points. So this is Lando's shot back. Change it for three. Oh, sorry, that was a blank. That was an eyeball. Does he not have a focus? He's used uh, Lando's ability here to re-roll. Um, it was two hits and an eye. Oh, was... sorry, hang on. We missed the trigger. Um, a Django Fett's ability, which is something that you don't actually see all that often. Um, so because Django did a less difficult maneuver than Lando did, he can change one eyeball to a blank. So he changed that eyeball to a blank and then Lando used his pilot ability to re-roll that blank into a hit. So uh, Django yeah. ending up taking two shields on that exchange there. There's big bases, make it really hard to see tokens. So I love that. So we're going back to Dials here. Um, interesting round. Only shots from Django and Lando. Um, Andy really getting punished for having Lando out of position there. Yeah, I think no points scored. Um, but I mean, shields on these fire sprays... Uh, once they're down, they really start hurting. Once they start taking some crits, they start taking some damage cards. Um, two more, we look at it, two more into Django, you've got half points. One more into Lando, you've got half points. And then the other two ships are relatively untouched. Asajj has one shield down. Nomlum is completely untouched at the moment. Uh, I don't know, what, what, what time we're at, um, 36 minutes left. We're over halfway. You've got to remember as well that Lando's only worth 55 points in this squad. So it is a cheap piece on the field that is pushing through damage right now for Andy. So what are you looking at here? I mean, you've got the left the left banks open to clear the stress on Nom Lum, but Nom Lum's not really doing too much this turn. Um, yeah, this is going to be Andy just reconfiguring, resetting. Uh, I suspect that uh, Mike will probably do the same, head to his side of the board, reset, turn around, uh, and then just see where everything lies and make some decisions and start trying to get back in. Someone's got to get some points on the board um, and then... Uh, make some decisions from that. But at the moment, it's going down to final salvo. And I actually think that's four, seven versus six. So a final salvo does actually benefit Andy here. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. I'm sure both players really do want to shoot and throw dice at each other. It's just hard. These, these large bases are so tough to manoeuvre that as soon as you get caught out of position... Uh, it takes some time, especially those jump masters with the, the asymmetrical dial. It does make it difficult to, to really turn yourself back around if you're not facing in the right direction. 
So Django is two points, two two health off half here. Yep. Uh, and Lando's quite close as well. He's one, um, but he's twenty eight points to the fifty one points of a half. Sorry, forty seven of the half. Forty seven half. So I think we'll see Andy turn Lando in, keep him in the fight here. It's worth it's worth that trade half a half here. For Lando, sure. even though he was out of position, has really managed to um, take advantage of the hurt um, that was put into Django a little bit earlier. I mean, you can one bank Lando here and try and keep some shots going on, but Django is uh, dropping those bombs, surely. Without no, a doubt, They're... no, he did not drop the bombs. He did not drop the bombs. Two bank from Nom Lum. Who still has a target lock, uh, Zam Wessel's target lock on Nom Lum. Takes a focus, getting ready to turn back around and get something done. Asaj doing the same. He has really kept Asaj, that older sister, uh, sat behind, bearing over the top of Nom Lum, saying, hey, come too close, I'm going to be the, the one that you have to answer to. And there we go. Uh, I don't think... Did we have uh, an L3 trigger? Uh, no, we did not have an L3 trigger. So that is just still a white three bank from Lando. Ooh, Zam coming in. Mike says, nope, I'm not going to reset. Uh, I'm not going to give you too much of a chance to reset. He just hard ones uh, and banks in. Which is not yeah, a bad think... spot. Sarge can't turn around. Um, Nom Lum is facing the other board edge. And Lando's in a bit of a tough spot here as well. Um, yeah, something we mentioned earlier was that Asage, you really got to watch out for that 5k. It's such a strong move and keeps Asage in the fight. But right now, she's pointing straight off the board. She can't 5k. She can't turn around. And there's just ample opportunity again for Michael to just come in um, from behind here, and he's done so. So now we've got Django. Ooh, here we go. A little pot shot. Grabbing it. Uh, range three out into Asage. It's an unanswered shot. See if it ends up meaning anything. Uh, there's the target lock. I think he's probably Dooku'd for a crit there. He's Dooku'd? Yeah, so he's, he's probably pre Dooku'd a crit. Works for him. Changes it to a crit. Sarge has three dice, probably... Ooh. She should be a full force here. She's got to focus. Spends it. Happy. Um, uh. We have um, agreed not to interfere with the game. So, uh, Asaj is at full force. I don't think you guys can see it anyway, but Asaj on the table here is down a force, but I think that's just... He'll notice that as soon as he needs to spend them, I suppose. So, positioning here probably favours Mike, just because Asaj can't really turn around, um, especially um, that Lando and Asaj probably going to be bumping heads here as well. Uh, Nom Lum doesn't have the hard turn open, thanks to Lando being there. This is the, the large base problem here, right? They're all so close to each other that they're all in each other's way. Um, and the, the initiative matching or mismatching is, is causing some decisions to not be available for Andy here. Uh, wondering I'm curious if, the... if we'll see some um, some turrets point inwards here. Yeah, uh, that's what I was I was thinking as well because, I mean, is Zam happy to just four straight? I th I think that avoids the debris. It's close. It's close. Andy's ships might get a little stuck. Agreed. I think, I think they or they already are sort of stuck. Um, I think he was so... Andy was probably very worried about those bombs. Uh, that That's probably why he did the three bank there. Um, and Django didn't even bother to drop them, which I think is quite rude, to be honest. Doesn't even leave, leave a parting gift as he runs away. So what, what do you do here, uh, Jim? What 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 do you what would you be doing with these these big fat scum ships? You'd be silly to um to chase Django here. Let's let's be real. There's no way uh, turning around these corner that that's um these two ships are catching up to him. Um, 
I definitely think about whether these turrets should actually start being used to um, protect that um, very vulnerable side um, of Asajj here and stop uh, Michael just getting free shots. Um, oh, the two bank fits. Nice. Bank fit. That's good. Um, yeah, not Nom Lum next turn is, is probably going to start being relevant again. That may cause some pull back on the aggression coming from coming from uh, Mike here because he's he's showing some real aggression with that Zam. Too hard from Asajj does bump into Lando, giving her broadside there to Zam if she wants it. And Zam, and it's two still leaves Michael free to just come in here the next two turns um, to take advantage of. Uh, that that broadside, um, no opportunity to really turn in with that rock placement there as well from yeah. Asajj. Yeah, Suresh points out. Um, Suresh points out that Django is out of position, which is definitely true. Django is also more hurt than Zam and likes being shot at less than Zam. Um, so I think Mike sort of. Taking them in and out has been pretty pretty good for him. Um, you can see there's five damage on his side of the board, and he's been able to spread it across two fire sprays, which probably feels pretty good for him here. So, sorry, Dooku to crit. Spends the focus. He's not taking a shot back. He only had... Sorry, I don't think he has to spend the focus there, because he, yeah, he only has a Sarge in the arc. So he's a Boba's. Boba Fett gunner. Doing work once again. All right, we've got the last shield coming off, um, coming off a Sarge there. That's really going to hurt next turn for Asajj here. Um, Michael has free reign to kind of just slowly push in here. Um, the threat of Lando doesn't look like it's bothered Michael before, um, and it might not now. Um, we do have the locks. We have Lando's. Lo Lando has a lock. Asajj has a lock, and Nom has a lock on <laughs> on uh, Z. <Zim. laughs> so, uh, but I mean, you're. We're looking two dice into two dice, um, and Lando is hurt. I'm not even sure. We'll, we'll just move the camera a little bit, just so that we can see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the, the the large base made it look almost like uh, perhaps a, a one bank wouldn't fit, but the, the one bank will fit just fine for Lando there. Uh, but a Sarge needs to get out of the way first, or maybe Lando's just happy to bump, take a bump, sit there. Um, uh, Asajj's turret is pointing forward, forward. Yep. Uh, Sir Leon I don't think that sloop from Nom Lum will fit either we'll definitely see a hard turn in here hopefully to either start pushing in um, on uh, Zam or even in pursuit of Django here um, but it doesn't look like Andy will have many arcs on Django uh, on Zam, sorry. Yeah, I don't think that three sloop fits for Nom Lum. And I don't no, think it's she definitely really going to be off to do it anyway. So she probably does a two or a one hard to the left. Starts coming in that lane there. She really wants to get... Andy is desperate to get one of these proton torpedoes off. That's 12 points he's brought. It's devastating, and he hasn't been able to fire one yet, which... Clearly Mike's plan. I mean, he avoided that, that one in the corner a few turns ago. Um, he does not want to take one of those proton torpedoes because that can just strip the shields straight off one of these guys. And now that their shield's down, that could easily put a crit under the hull, which is even more devastating if you get a structural damage or a um, the hard turn one that I'm forgetting right now. Uh, damaged engine. Damaged engine, yeah. There's some real devastating crits in there that can really lock these fire sprays down and make them a little bit more predictable, which is... Uh, yeah, I think Michael's really taking advantage of the unpredictability and the the ability to quickly change from uh, retreat to uh, attack. He's done that a couple of times in this game already. Uh, yeah, I agree, um, Sir Leon. Uh, or Senor Leon? Leon, I'm just going to call you Leon. Um, the track, I think, he, he wants to get that stress. He wants to use the stress... Um, and the, the stress is dependent on the turret, but not the front arc. So I think because of the way that he's been flying Asajj, he's kept it in the front arc. But he needs to turn it now. Um, try and get a stress down onto one of these fire sprays so that Lando can start taking some quality shots. Because Lando's shots have been 
subpar um, so far, just due to the fact that they're, they're two 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 dice primary base into two dice defense of the fire sprays. So with Zam here, do you just send her in? Not a, not a loss at all, I agree. Um, uh, and clearly it's designed to take on different squads to this. Uh, and there's a lot more games to be played for Andy. But in this in this particular game, you don't really need to keep that that tra uh, the, the turret in the front. Yeah, possibly a smart matchup um, from the team matching process there. Um, it's interesting. Michael's in a great position here. I don't think we can really fault his movements going forwards. I'm interested in what you think on um, Andy's position. He really needs to focus in and get some shots, get some damage through, um, especially trading Lando. Trading Lando seems like such a good move right now to get some points on the board. Um, what do you think Andy's move is here? I think you maybe bump with Lando um, and then probably a two bank with a Sarge and rotate that turret. Just try and get the turret gun relevant and then also get the Sarge's ability relevant so that um, so that Lando can actually start throwing three dice. Because Lando's got that focus. He doesn't really mind too much for a bump. Sorry, he's got that target lock. He doesn't mind a bump at the moment. I don't think Asajj fits that 5k. A 5k? Mm. I don't think she fits it, no. Hey, if, if you're me, you just dial it in and you just pray. Nomlum probably does a one hard here, though. Which may even bump a 5k. Or maybe not. So, yeah, you can see how little shots have gone into Nomlum because Nomlum has one charge on her Zam. And we've got two charges into the uh, Australian Zam. So there hasn't been a huge amount of shots. It's a lot of jockeying for position in this game. Um, both both a both players pretty hesitant to d dive right in and, and take some really good shots. Um, and they've both done quite well to avoid many of the shots. So too hard there from Numb. Probably Jan, just take a focus. Next turn, Nom Lum is going to be a problem. All right, yep, Sam does the two bank, three bank. Three bank, probably going to rotate that arc. I would suspect uh, Z Zam, Zam Wessel is going to want to dive in on, on Lando here. Three hard from Lando. Yeah, looking to say, hey, have you overcommitted? Because if you've overcommitted, then um, you're getting some real shots into your side there. Really strong play by Andy there. He's hoping for that range one on Zam. Um Fingers crossed for uh, Michael here. He hasn't overcommitted. Um, there is good opportunity here to still sink into Lando if he's made a call on that uh, hard right. And the thing is, if if he's gone too slow, he may actually end up getting caught in that in that Nom Lum arc, which means he might be copying a proton torpedo. Ooh, goes for the boost. The he's boost. hoping to, yeah, maybe he's... I mean, Zam will still have a back arc. If she's that, oh, got the block. Yeah, that's very good. Um, just to deny the shot. Uh, I don't think the only shot there will probably probably be a Sarge into Zam. But that's uh, that, I'm I think Andy's very happy with that. That that boost was a pretty solid move. Um, looks like Mike was planning on the rear arc shots to do most of the work there and not fall into the trap of that corner with with the lovely Nom Lum turning around. Yeah, great block by Andy. Um, that Nom Lum is going to be a close shot. It looks like in arc it might just be out. Um, but if it's in... Ooh, I think it's in. I, I think it might be. Nah, it's, it's out. Oh, it's in. I don't know. So that's the range two. That's a stress... Not going to matter too much. It does lock down the maneuvers for next turn. Um, and if Andy wants to, he can just one forward with Lando and sit there and force either another bump or a, or a fast maneuver from Zam. 
He's setting up next turn for that, that Nom Lum Torpedo to go straight into Zam's buttocks. So we've got a range 2 turret arc shot, 2 dice into 2 dice. Uh, Asajj does have a target lock, and she's got the force. She's got one blank there. Uh, one focus result, spend the force, nothing. Activates Zam Trigger. Zam Trigger is... You'd better be in business. Doesn't have arc, can't shoot back. So here's the shot we're waiting for here. Oh, he's checking it. I reckon he's. I reckon he's in. I reckon he's going to cop it. He might be obstructed, but you still don't like that four dice into three dice. I've got to teach these guys to. The clickable, on. yeah. Click man. It's so frustrating to watch. <laughs> there we go. Yep, he's got him. Range okay. three obstructed. He's probably going to fire it. Great block by Andy. Yeah, Bell. that was brilliant. He knew exactly what he was doing there. Why bother trying to get a three dice shot from Lando when you can take a fully modded torpedo at range three? Zam has no mods. She's empty. And that's what you want to see. That's that's what full roll. full string. Hit hit crit. Focus. Hit 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 crit. L lucky uh Unlucky, sorry. Takes a crit. Fuel leak. So Nom did not have to spend that target lock, importantly, because now that block is set up perfectly for uh, uh, Lando again next turn. Lando can just one forward, clear that stress, sit there. Doesn't have to go anywhere, and he's basically locked um, Zam in for maybe a one bank, um, but I'm not convinced that a one bank... No, the one bank won't fit. So Andy's ahead now. We've got Zam half. We've got points on the board, yeah. Points so on the board, we finally. That. We've got 17 minutes left. Um, Andy has moved ahead with this great uh, Proton Top Shot um, and is in a great position to actually pursue that next turn. He's still got the lock. Didn't have to spend it. Lando's in for a good block. Um, very interested in seeing now how Michael is going to turn the tables. Uh, on this one. He has... Yeah, it's looking tough. The The only answer Mike has here now is he needs to not lose any more points, which means he can't lose two health on Django, and he needs to half Lando, and he needs to half Asajj. Uh, and Asajj is... She's facing away. She's probably either going to... Probably park herself back again behind... Um, behind... Nom Lum. Nom Lum's probably putting in a three bank. Um, Lando's probably just one straighting and maybe a two hard bump from Asajj to just get behind Nom Lum again. I think this looks very, very good for Andy here. And one top down as well. Let me let me update that. Should also update. Yeah, Andy is in a solid position. As soon as Michael halves um, both Nom Lum and Asajj, all Andy has to do is Plink two damage into Django here to score another half, and um, Andy's back ahead. Yep. Yeah. Uh, vamos con yo. I, I, unfortunately, I don't speak any Spanish whatsoever, but I think our Spanish watchers are going, getting very excited here because it is looking very, very good for the Spanish team. Um, it is definitely their game to lose here. Uh, Mike has to put, start putting in some real, real work. He's he's probably going to go for the safe move um, and will maybe a three forward, drop some bombs, three forward. You've got to be safe. You can't. You can't let that Lando block. Because I think that Lando block is just... That's the best move. Um, and at least then you can take a, a rear arc shot into... Yeah, the game state is now awful for Michael. I agree, Suresh. Uh, it's looking pretty rough here for him. Um, that that block from Lando, the boost, was uh, pretty A-grade. That was a pretty, pretty brilliant move there. I'll just get you to update those... Uh points there as well, Cam. We're looking at 51 points uh, 
for Andy Which now. Which points? Um, they are updated. They've been updated? Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, Mike really needs to turn in. He, if he kills Lando, which is also possible if he can get both fire sprays on it and, and Andy doesn't um, send send Lando away and he keeps him there, a three straight, um, a three straight focus or a target lock from Zam uh, and then maybe a two hard boost. Oh, I don't know if you want to take that though. Oh no, we're getting Jajas in the chat. This uh, Andy's getting some good support here. Um, I think it's ya yeah 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't, as I said, I don't I don't speak any Spanish whatsoever. So three not in a good three bank there exactly yeah. from. So I'm not even sure if the three four. I think the three forward three forward at least gets you out of those arcs, gets rid of your stress, but then. You're left to just take the proton torpedo next turn. Um, oh, sorry, the crit that went into Zem. Sorry, let me update that. Uh, fuel leak. leak. Fuel leak. So, yep, there's the bank getting in behind. Sorry, the, the turn getting in behind Nom Lom again. Three straight. I think he's out of that proton torpedo arc this time. Uh, probably very very happy to just maybe even target lock yeah target lock put everything you have you have to kill lando killing lando will put you in the lead um but it's a tenuous lead it's likely we'll see the bomb here get forced through with a Django as well that'll secure him half points well i don't um, it may not have range on lando it will be close. It will be close. And he won't have the Boba trigger either from... Uh, ooh, and I think he's avoided... So Lando's not going to have a shot. So he does. He does clip him. So... Uh, so... Yeah, wow. Nom Lom's taking both. See if they matter. So a strain on Nom Lom. This is probably the second bomb for Nom Lom. Uh, nothing. Got nothing. Yeah, yeah, Binks. Thank you, young noodle arm. I I assume you are Lord Lord Ninox. I'm sure you wouldn't be saying any horrid uh, profanity. Ooh, we got a crit. Ah, he do good crit. That makes sense. Okay, so what is this crit? Weapons failure. Ooh, that's rough. That is rough. So that's half points now, um, and a weapons failure into Lando. Uh, so. I did miss that. What was that? Right, okay, cool. So, um, good use of the Dooku there. Basically a free crit. Um, and, yep, finally, Andy has remembered to flip his force charge that he spent uh, about 30, <laughs> 40 minutes ago. So that turret arc is active and he's got the range 3 out into, into Django, sorry, into Zam. Oh, sorry. He was checking for the ability. Stress checking check. for the yep. ability. Yep, and no stress pass there, but we've got shots from uh, Django here. Looks yeah. like to Lando, I think. Yep. So, I don't think he's got... A f no, he does not have a target lock. Oh, he does not have a target lock out there. So, just the hit crit. Ah, spends uh, L3 to re-roll into just a damage. Solid work on that flipping of L3. Oh, sorry, guys. Just bumped my mic. So, no damage going into Lando there. So, this is the one that you want. Range 1. Uh, Lando's got 5 left, so he's probably not dying to this shot. Oh, and uh, yeah, wow. Zam took the focus instead of the target lock. Zam took that focus. And yeah, so that's three more damage. 
Lando uh, should be on two health left now. We got one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Such a cheap piece. Six. 20 points on the board for Michael now. Still behind. Still though, behind, yeah. Even though he's hit Lando and he, so hard. He does need to be careful if Nomlum decides to change targets. Just. Oh, I don't think she can. I don't think she can run forward. So, yeah, no shots there for, for Lando, which is definitely working in Michael's favor. We've got the turret arc shot from. Asage, nothing at the front, so she'll take that. Range 3 obstructed out to Zam, so 2 dice into 4. Uh, but no mods on the Zam side of things, and no shields, so it's probably not excited for Blankies. Uh, does have the lock? Nope, I'm not going to spend it. And here's some free charges uh, for Zam here. No. Had the return shot. Oh no. Now. He chose better man business. He is using that return shot though. Oh, he has a shot into a such. I didn't notice it. Oh, two crits. That's going to hurt. Asajj <laughs> does full force here. So she is ready uh, for the. Oh, he rolled and then threw the dice away. She evades it. She's fine. Nothing at the turret arc, and probably out of auto blaster cannon. Dirty free feats. Andy is a homeless. I have no idea what this is, what that's referencing, and I I hope it's not offensive. Um, I think there's some uh, bants going on from some mad bants. Some of the Spanish players here, maybe. Babosa uh, Espacial uh, is space slug in Spanish. Thanks, Wookie Wonderland. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Babosa Espacial. Um, Andy Don't. play using free Wi-Fi from McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hey, you gotta you gotta grind, hey, you gotta grind, and if you gotta use free Wi-Fi at Macca's, sorry, McDonald's, um, we do call it here in Australia, we call it Macca's. Um, I'm not gonna say that it sounds better, but it's just what we say. Um, just how you guys, when you're saying our name, you say uh, Babosa Espacial. So. Um, are you saying Barbosa Espacial sounds better? Because Macca's sounds better. Uh, no, I'm just saying, you know, Macca's sounds better to us because it, we, that's it? what we say every time. Anyway, on the on the game, um, <laughs> uh, Lando is probably pretty happy to maybe even three bank to the left um, and just get in the way. Don't don't take any more shots from, from Django. Lando, sorry, Zam has to make a choice here. Hard one left, hard one right. Which one do you take? Because, I don't know, a one bank or a, even a one hard or a two hard from... Hmm. Yeah, Andy's got to make a choice here, a I think. Good with... to punish Sam, regardless of which way. Um, it'll be that extra boost that might actually save Michael here if Nomlum decides to take that hard turn to the left. Yeah, I think that's, that's what um, Andy has to try and consider here. Because a one hard left, and a one, a one hard left and a boost... Could could get out of arc for a one bank from um, from Nom, but if Nom uh, one banks or two banks to try and catch the right hand pilot turn from Zam, then you've you've lost the left. So it's pretty much a fifty fifty shot here. Um, it's no offensive I internal joke uh, with Andy. Uh, yeah, good, that's fine. I can't join in because I don't have the context. Um, and so he probably won't find it funny that some random Australian guy is making fun of him using McDonald's free Wi-Fi, and that he has dirty feet. Dirty, dirty feet. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll see Andy's feet. In yeah, once once we're all allowed to travel around the world again, uh, I will come to Spain and I will inspect his feet myself. 
He's walking, oh, he's walking around barefoot. Hey, I like that. Free, free. It's called free, free foot. Yeah, I think it is called free foot. Uh, so Andy is ahead here. It might be why the uh, Spanish team is throwing some bants his way rather than cheering him on. Um, he really wants to sink uh, Zam here, really push in on Zam um, and make sure that he secures these points here. Yeah, uh, Zam's probably not taking shots into Lando. Just she has to hard turn. Um, and so if he uses Lando to block uh, Django up, that could that could actually end up working in his favor as well, um, because then Django might only have the Nom Lum shot, and Nom Lum could just get a target lock with her Zam, and use a proton into Django, which would give him half points on Django. It could be a time for a um, a change of target for Andy. I think the players are now choosing their Zam cards, their respective Zam cards. Um, oh, I should update. We do have no more bombs left on Zam. Zam is bombless. Uh, Django still has his bombs and his contraband, but he's spent most of the game away from everyone else, so that's not surprising. A three bank is now blue. That's correct, Lord Ninox. But I don't think he's... Oh, he is stressed from the boost. You see that one bank now. So Zam is committing. Zam is committing to... Um, Z Sorry, Nomlum is committing to Zam turning pilot right. Yep, there we go. Three bank, it's blue. Clear the stress. I don't think Django, even if he somehow luckily puts the perfect mover, would even fit in between Nom and Django. So it looks like Django will be shooting into Nomlum, which is not where you want to be shooting right now because Nomlum is untouched. And we've got a three bank as well from Asajj. Not sure. He just, I think he needs to press move. I'm not sure what he's doing. Just presses move. Oh, I think he was Ooh. considering whether or not he would hit the debris um, and whether or not he should use contraband. So this, yeah, looks like a change hey, of target here. Right. Yeah, brilliant. He knows, Setting up the trap. Yeah. Because if he gets half here, that's pretty much impossible. This is the, probably the last last turn, actually. Um, yeah, one round left. So two more points, uh, two more health off of. Ooh, uh, go that here. is a that is a very very rough call there. Um, I don't think he can turn around to get a shot. He has to flip the fuel leak, yeah, and just sit there and take it. So essentially, Mike's path to victory here. I don't think he's going to have a shot. It depends on what he did with... Oh, so actually, here's an interesting thing. He could use Contraband Cybernetics and Caesar Navigator to readjust Django's positioning here. There's the Contraband. Oh. So he's done a Contraband. Caesar Navigator. He did a two one hard... hard. A one hard that did not fit. So he took a gamble there. And it did not pay off. He's stressed. It doesn't really matter too much. This is probably the last round. Modless. So he's, he's modless. Uh, he's, he's taken really two shots. He needs to... Um, he can't push enough damage into Nom Lum. He needs five damage into Nom Lum. Not enough. Not enough. I think... Yeah, he needs three damage into Asajj and he didn't get it. That's... That is game, essentially there. Um, but it's now whether or not, uh, whether or not Andy can. Ooh, a trick shot! <laughs> trick shot! So Andy's oh actually goodness. got some really great shots here. So that is time in the round. The, the table timer just went off. So this is the last round. Um, he gets trick shot, but because of weapons failure, he's only got yeah. one dice base anyway. Um, but I will get. Um, uh, I will see if I can get the guys. Uh, into um, a chat after this to see if um, either of them uh, would like to uh, run through the game. Um, I'll just check in with them once they're all finished rolling dice. Um, 
Zam evades it. Zam's fine. But I think the the shot that, that Mike is really worried about here is that Proton Torpedo. Uh, and, and even this shot from Asajj here could get him half points. Needs two damage into Jango, but Jango's got no mods and is not looking happy. And this is unobstructed as well. And Asajj has that that target lock. Rerolls it. Oh, that's a crit. That's He's got crit. shields. Mm, that's half. Shield gone and a crit, which happens to be... Oop. Disable power regulator. Doesn't matter, but um, it does matter in terms of points, because that's half. Oh, proton torpedo, fully modded. Uh, doesn't need the doesn't need the target lock. Again, uh, Nomlum caught. Sorry, uh, Zam calls a evade, gets it anyway. Uh, takes three crits. Crit, crit, crit. Panicked. Console fire. And stable power regulator. Once again, doesn't matter too much. Um, doesn't afford any more points. Um, but does leave Zam on two health. So at that puts that. it at 1-1. One, one. Um, correctly? One yes. For, one for Australia. Correct. Balancing out the results um, from last game. So, yep, we have 1-1, one, one, neck and neck, Australia v Spain. We have two more games coming out tomorrow uh, on this channel, so make sure you follow and join us tomorrow. Um, one game will be starting at 8 p.m. local time here in Sydney uh, and 10 p.m. local time here in Sydney, both here on the Sydney City Space Slugs. Um, uh, the Harp Daddy, who's been in the chat a little bit today, um, has been... Uh, We'll be playing at 10 p.m. tomorrow, so if you want to see the Harp Daddy go up against one of Spain's best, please come and join us. And then at 8 p.m. we have Nobby, who I also saw in the chat earlier, um, although I think he's off-streaming his own games at the moment. Um, sorry, guys, just seeing if you guys want to do some post-game chat. Uh, yeah, I think they're just running through the game together at the moment. Just want, wanting to know if they want to, me to jump in and uh, we can uh, we can chat it out together. Uh, I just would have to then up the voice input, see if they, see if they are chatting. Um, thank you for joining us, everyone, as well. That was a fantastic game. Um, I think Mike played very well, turning away his, his fire sprays when he needed to. Um, but it seemed that towards the end there, uh, Andy saw it coming. He did that block um, with Lando when, when Zam tried to do the one hard away. Uh, and if he hadn't done that, that would have been a pretty... Uh, pretty devastating for Andy if he hadn't got that block in on, on Zam. I think that was very key to the turning point towards the end. And we're still seeing the bands uh, from the Spanish team here. Uh, thank you for joining us as well, guys, to cheer on Andy. Um, hopefully he cleans his feet after this match. Yeah, I'd really like to see a nice clean feet, Andy, to be honest, next time. Um yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, again, we will be streaming again pretty much in 24 hours. So, uh, yeah, come back in and, and check us out. Um, we uh, And if you did miss the beginning and you want to watch the whole stream again, uh, we'll have the VOD available, but we'll also be uploading it to our YouTube channel. Uh, same name, Sydney City Space Slugs. So please come check us out. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us here. Um, all right, I think the guys I think the guys are just going to get... The guys just want to go to bed, uh, or at least Mike does anyway. I think it's pretty pretty late now for him, and he's pretty sad <laughs> about not winning. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Thanks, everyone. Um, we will catch you all tomorrow. Uh, thanks, Jim, for joining me here uh, and commentating alongside me. Uh, and everyone, have a wonderful rest of the day, rest of the evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye from uh, Barbosa Especial. <laughs> yeah, goodbye.